Now a new low. Last night, the ABC aired the first part of a documentary called The School That Tried to End Racism, ostensibly about promoting racial equality and tolerance in schools. Except, instead of preaching harmony, the documentary involved boys and girls as young as nine being grilled about race and privilege and in one instance being asked, what does it mean to be white? I've read some books and things like that and I know that the white skinned people, they can still be more respected than other skinned people and it makes me uncomfortable. What does it mean to you to be white? I don't really know what to say. His reaction, I want to bring an author and commentator, former teacher, Dr Kevin Donnelly. He joins me now. Kevin, this is, uh, this is extraordinary, this program. This is the ABC promoting critical race theory, isn't it? It is, and it's uh, appalling. It's, it's shocking. And it would be to, I, I would imagine, every parent. I mean, you've got young nine, ten-year-old children, some of them, and we just saw them before, playing sport, being happy. I mean, childhood should be about enjoying who you are. You should not have to go to school to be told that you're racist, that you're a, uh, a white supremacist, that somehow you're guilty of oppressing others. I mean, one of the activities, and uh, you might mention it later, it involves kids with green eyes or, uh, you know, light skin going to the front of a line, walking three steps forward, and the kids at the back, who are obviously brown-eyed or dark-skinned, they're asked, well, what mm. does it like to be left behind? And this is just what I call reverse racism, where you're teaching young Anglo-Australian or kids who are white that they're somehow privileged and it's wrong. Why have we got ourselves into a situation where, where literacy and numeracy in this country is... Uh, levels we haven't seen before. We're so far uh, behind uh, other comparable countries in world rankings. We're trying to imbue in young people with programs like this a sense of unconscious bias, yet we're not worried about kids not being able to even spell the word unconscious. <laughs> we're loading them up with all these uh, arguments about white privilege, yet we're not getting the basics right. I mean, uh, Peter, you and I have talked about this uh, on The Credland Show for a number of years now. and. Uh, as you know, uh, that uh, book I edited that came out earlier this year, I wrote a chapter on school education. It's something that's been happening for 30, 30, 40 years. What's happened is that what I call the cultural left and even the teacher union, the AEU, even the National English, English Teachers Association, they adopt this kind of cultural left view about education, which is about uh, student agency, it's about empowering students to change the world. It goes back to a neo-Marxist view of uh, what should happen in education. And Joan Kerner in Victoria many years ago gave a talk at a Fabian Society where she argued education, the curriculum, the schools, should be used to overthrow capitalism. And so there's been a history there with a number of uh, teacher unions, subject associations, academics, who argue that education is about liberating, empowering, but it's all this mm. cultural left view. Whereas when I taught, education was, in about, was about being impartial and objective and actually giving children the skill to weigh arguments and to be balanced and to decide what is right, what is wrong, based on the evidence. Yeah, look, I even had a subject in Year 10 called Critical Thinking, which was to go and look for the counter-argument to what you thought you believed in and do exactly that, weigh it all up. But it's not critical theory anymore, critical thinking. It's about critical race theory. I've got to ask, you know, a lot of parents say, they, they get on radio and say this, they put it in the paper and letters to the editor, they say it to me anecdotally, that, that homeschooling has given them an insight or a window into what their kids are being taught more than anything else they've ever had and they don't like the focus of the curriculum. So how do parents fight back? It's a very difficult uh, question. I mean, I've been intimately involved in education. As you know, I taught for 18 years and uh, I reviewed the national curriculum just uh, 2014. So even I, as an expert, I've not been able to really change education as it should be. 
So for parents, it's far more difficult. What parents have to do is to make sure at home that they interact with their children, they talk to them, they give them an idea of balance, they uh, get onto the school principal or the teacher, argue the case, and at the end of the day, they do vote. And so political parties, Labor and Liberal, who are both to blame here, they need to be uh, held to account. Kevin Donnelly, thank you for your time. My pleasure.